So in this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of epithelial cells or the different types of epithelia. So there's two types. There's simple and stratified. And so the simple is just one layer of cells as shown right here. In that diagram, it's just one layer of cells resting on top of the basal surface. And it's pretty straightforward. The epithelia is named according to the shape of the cells. Since it's only one layer, you only have to worry about the shape of those cells. And so there are different shapes for cells. For example, Squamous is essentially pancake-like. Pancake-like is pretty flat. Cuboid is a square. And columnar is just a column. And so the shape of the cell determines the name of the epithelia. And stratified is essentially pretty similar to simple epithelia. But they have more than one layer as shown down here. So essentially the cells are piled on top of each other and those that type of epithelia is named by the shape of the top layer the top layer of the cells. So if we were talking about this we would name it using the top layer up here so for example, these two, they are squamous in shape. Let's just say they're squamous. And so the top one would be simple squamous epithelial. And so it would just be named simple squamous epithelium. And stratified would be the same thing, except you just replace simple with stratified. And so one key thing to note in the stratified epithelial is that only the bottom layer of the cells touch the basement membrane. And so as a result, you're going to get some cells lying on top of other cells. While in contrast, simple epithelia, all of the cells touch the basement membrane. So now that we've essentially defined the types of epithelia, let's talk about what each does and essentially where you can find each type of epithelial epithelium sorry let me just clear this and so first we're gonna talk about simple squamous epithelium and so remember these are essentially the really flat cells and so this type of epithelium it's a really thin layer so it permits rapid diffusion or transport of stuff uh, of substances across a membrane and it also secretes serious fluid but most importantly you have to remember that this epithelium since it's really thin it's gonna allow things to essentially diffuse across membranes pretty easily and if you think about it like that it would be pretty clear that it could be found in the alveoli which you need for um, diffusion of oxygen. And then it's also found in the glomeruli, the endothelium, and the serosa. And the endothelium essentially lines the inside of blood vessels, and it's a special type of simple squamous epithelium. And so that's pretty much what the simple squamous epithelium does. Next, we're going to talk about the simple cuboid. And so the simple cuboidal epithelium, remember cuboid is square, so it's just one layer of square-shaped cells. Um, and these types of cells, this type of epithelium, generally helps with absorption and secretion, mucus production, as well as movement. And it typically does more secreting than absorbing and it can be found in the liver, the bronchioles, and the kidney tubules. And so the next thing we're going to talk about is simple columnar epithelium. 
And so remember, these cells are really tall, as shown down here. And so it's just one layer of those essentially rectangular cells, and they're tall and narrow, and they may possess goblet cells. So, goblet cells. And goblet cells help with mucus secretion. And so, simple columnar cells, um, simple columnar epithelium generally will secrete mucus and absorb things. But the difference between simple columnar and simple cuboid is simple columnar does more s absorption than secretion. And you could find it in the lining of your GI tract and in the uterus and the uterine tubes are some important places to remember. And one thing I forgot to mention before where it was simple versus stratified, so simple is one layer, stratified is many, there is essentially a middle. So let me clear this. There's essentially a middle one where it's called pseudo-stratified. And so let me just draw it out. So it's in this epithelium, its shorter cells do not reach the top surface, but all of the cells touch the basement membrane. So it, it essentially kind of looks like this. Let me draw it out. And so here I've drawn a couple cells. I'm not going to draw the rest. So we'll pretend this here is the top. And so, as you can see, these two cells, right there, are essentially, they're just shorter, and so the other ones, um, the taller ones, those cells, are able to essentially push it down. And so, as a result, pretty much what you're going to see is the taller ones are going to reach the top. and if you're looking from the top you won't be able to see the shorter ones but it's important to remember that all of these cells reach the basement membrane and these cells also produce mucus just like the simple columnar cells and finally let's go talk about stratified epithelia and so the stratified epithelium is something that is pretty important. And so stratified squamous epithelium is the most widespread epithelium in the body. And so this type of epithelium, as we talked about before, it has um, essentially a bunch of layers. And the deepest layers still continue to undergo mitosis. And that's pretty important to remember because the deepest layers are producing more and more cells. And so there are two kinds of stratified squamous epithelia. So remember, two kinds of stratified squamous. Eh, I don't think I need to write that. And so one is keratinized, which essentially means that there is a layer of compact dead squamous cells that are just packed tightly with keratin and coated with a water repellent layer so this could be found found on skin so it's found on the surface of your skin so when you think of keratinized stratified epithelia, think of your skin because if you get scratched, you can scratch off the dead squamous cells that are on top. And the other kind is non-keratinized, which essentially it lacks the surface layer of dead cells. So it's going to be more sensitive. 
And so if you think of places that are more sensitive, I'll just name a few. So it's found on the tongue, the esophagus, the vagina, and some internal membranes. And so remember, keratinized has dead cells on top that are tight, tightly packed and coated with a glycolipid water repellent layer, while non-keratinized lacks the, dead, the surface layer of dead cells. And so that pretty much covers epithelial tissue and the different types of epithelial tissue. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends.